Let's start off with tools needed for assembly. The basic tools needed are a pair of side cutters, 7, 8, 10, and 17 millimeter wrenches, 2.5 and 4 millimeter Allen wrenches, and an adjustable wrench for lowering the feet. Although you can assemble the ride with only these tools, we also suggest the following tools to get the job done faster. A handheld cordless drill with a torque set around 8 to 10, 2.5 and 4 millimeter driver bits, a socket driver bit, an 8 millimeter ratcheting wrench, 7, 8, and 10 millimeter sockets and socket wrench, and a 17 millimeter socket and socket wrench. Now that you know the tools, let's begin the assembly. To install the top cross frame, first remove the six screws on the exterior of the tower. Remove the six 8 millimeter flange nuts on the cross frame and align the frame with the top tower. While holding the cross frame, reinstall the six screws first. Make sure that you adjust the frame so the screws enter smoothly. Tighten these screws. Next, reinstall the six flange nuts on the inside of the tower and tighten. An 8mm ratcheting wrench comes in handy for this task. Locate the grounding point for the cross frame, remove the 7mm hex nut, and attach the ground. Connect the 2 pin connector for the LED strip. Next, attach the hanger arm assembly to the cross frame. Locate the ground wire and attach, then reinstall all 8mm flange nuts. Pull the cables out and carefully thread them along the internal sides of the tower until positioned behind the PC. Match the label on the cables to the corresponding link box. Connect the HDMI, USB, and power connections to the link box, making sure they are firmly seated. Perform these steps for both hanger arm assemblies. Before installing the monitor, Remove the two 17mm bolts on top of the cross frame and reserve for later. Be sure to move the LED and ground cables away from the mounting areas to avoid getting pinched during install. Align and hook the monitor assembly to the four slotted holes in the top cross frame and push the monitor down into place. Insert the monitor LED connector through the cable access hole and reinstall the 17mm bolts to secure the monitor to the frame. Remove the 2.5mm screws on the top access door on the front of the tower. Take care when opening this panel, as the base station can be damaged by shock. Connect the LED 3-pin connector, grounding connector, power cord, and DVI connector. To install the top header, first remove the eight 8mm flange nuts on the back of the monitor frame. Align the header mounting brackets with the studs from behind the monitor frame and reinstall the flange nuts. We're now ready for the side headers. After removing the 12 4mm screws from the top of the tower, align the side header with the holes and reinstall the screws. Be sure not to tighten any screws until all have been inserted. Perform these steps for both headers. Next, let's install the header backlight. Be sure to first adjust the lights to point upward toward the header. After removing the two 4mm screws, align the assembly and reinstall the screws. Plug in the power connector once secured. Moving on to the motion base. First, remove the emergency button panel. It's a good idea to remove the grounding and button connectors in order to reduce the risk of damage. Make sure that the player handle support bracket has all four 17mm nuts and bolts tightened. Install the handlebars and be sure to add the ground wires. Reinstall and tighten the 17mm nuts. Next, attach the wings using the four 8mm nuts provided making sure to attach the ground wires on both wings. 
We strongly recommend whenever installing any nuts without nylon or any screws to the motion base that you use Loctite 242, also known as Loctite Blue, which has been included in your support kit. Do not use Loctite Red, which is also in your support kit. Now we're ready for the seats. Remove the 4mm screws and the 17mm nuts from the bottom of the seat. Notice there's a speaker connector on the bottom of the seat that will need to be connected. Align the seat with the mounting holes on the motion base frame and reinstall the nuts. Do not tighten yet. Now attach your speaker connector. Next, align the seat with the rear cover and reinstall the 4mm screws. Now, tighten the 17mm nuts under the seat. Again, don't forget to connect your speakers. Now, onto the footrests. After removing all the 4mm screws from the footrest and footrest area on the motion base frame, attach the ground point using the 7mm nut attached to the footrest. Slide the footrest down into place, align the holes, and reinstall the screws. Next, we'll need to install the rear cable trunking panel. After removing the 10mm hex head nuts from the motion base and the 4mm screws from the panel cover, position the panel into place and secure. Carefully move the motion base towards the tower, aligning the holes with the tower studs. Tighten the 17mm nuts and insert the cables into the access hole. Plug in all connectors to the corresponding place on the connector panel. Reinstall the trunking panel cover and 4mm screws. To install the dust clouds, first carefully clip the cable ties securing the keep out fabric and drape the fabric on the front of the tower. Remove the 4mm screw and LED cable from the dust cloud. Feed the cable into the tower opening and align the dust cloud with the four slotted holes on the side of the tower, pushing down to slide it into place. Reinstall the screw and plug in the LED connector. Perform these steps for both dust clouds. Reinstall the front access cover and 2.5mm screws. Install both keep out fabric signs. Don't forget to use Loctite 242 on these screws as they experience both vibration from the motion base and pull from the fabric. Align the front sled with the motion base and install the link brackets and chain link. These use 10mm nuts and bolts. Once the link brackets are centered and tightened along with the chain link, loosen the 10mm bolt on the chain link bracket. Using an 8mm deep socket or wrench, tighten the 8mm nut in order to remove slack from the chain. Then, retighten the 10mm bolt which will keep the chain from losing tension. Plug in all the connectors to the sled assembly. Align the side ski to the side of the motion platform and connect the plug to the motion base outlet. Secure the ski with three 10mm bolts. You may need to lower the feet of the motion base for the hole to line up to insert the front bolt. Do not tighten these bolts just yet. Perform these steps for both skis. Next, test fit the floor cable cover and make any alignment adjustments that are needed before tightening the 10mm bolts to secure the skis. Insert the 4mm screws into the floor cable cover, making sure not to tighten any screws until all are inserted. Before operation, be sure to lower the feet all the way down on the front sled to reduce any movement or vibration. 
Now that everything's connected, it's time to power up and test the ride. Notice that the lights come on immediately. The motion base performs a range test and the HTC Vive headset lights turn green. The top monitor boots with BIOS, Windows, Steam VR loads, and then the Rabbit's program. Test out the ride to ensure proper performance by paying attention to all movement, lights, headset functionality, safety sensors, fans, video, and sound. Now, let's stock the face masks. Remove the face masks from the bag and remove the strings on both sides. Take a little less than half and then fold those in half. Push them into the opening. They should pull out similar to a tissue from a tissue box. This will reduce the chances of players taking more than one mask. Setup is now complete. For any comments or questions, please contact LEI Games Service Department at support at leigames.com. Also, be sure to check out our new parts web store for any consumable items like face masks, face pads, and head straps.